we are going to take you to a really old system. Let's take you 40 years into the future, into a chestnut, walnut, overstory food forest of the temperate climate. The stability and abundance of our potential future in perennial long-term food security. This is an enormous hardy kiwi. It stretches in all directions here, around quite a few and over the top of quite a few trees. There will be hundreds and hundreds of pounds of fruit on this at the end of summer. After 30 years, this is the size of the main vine. It's an enormous vegetative mass here. This is not the normal kiwi fruit with the hairy outer skin. This is the hardy kiwi. I think it's actually tastier than the conventional kiwi. And this one grows in these cold, temperate climates. It's a beautiful, exotic fruit. It's a sweet tasting fruit, just like normal kiwi fruit. It's juicier with a little bit more kiwi flavour and you can eat the skin as well. Look at that for a vine in the canopy. Don't doubt yourself that in a cold climate you can end up with a food forest even when it snows all winter that looks like a tropical rainforest of food that produces everything you need. It's just your imagination that restricts you from achieving this. Here we have a system that's just about fully mature. We've got chestnuts through the canopy. We've got cold hardy pecans. We've got cold hardy persimmons. We've got climbing kiwi. We've got understore story custard apple, the pawpaw. We've got service berries and we've got variations of your classic cold climate berries through this. It's self cycling at this stage. It's, it's just about a mature forest at canopy height. Even the apples are high in this canopy. It's a, a, a natural forest with very little maintenance needed. Chestnuts here. Chestnuts right the way through. Mulberry, berries, it's a whole assembly of species. This is a black walnut, a grafted black walnut high quality fruit, easy to crack, a very good fruit to eat raw or cooked. And black walnuts are a little bit allopathic to other trees around them, which does give you that sort of space, openness inside a food forest. But we've got the black walnuts, we've got the chestnuts, we've got hazelnuts, we've got pecans. There's a whole mixture of nuts that we can include in these cold climates. 
Here are cold climate bees. They're at the end of summer and they've really got a very full hive here. Potentially we've got a swarm about to happen. Everybody's gathering on the outside. Um, there's a great amount of noise and activity here. And uh, it's wonderful to see the amount of storage that we have. These bees are traveling up to three kilometers from this hive and bringing in millions of different tree elements from millions of different trees. Not just nectars, and, but also pollens and propolis that glues the, the hive together inside. So you've got the, the largest diversity from the largest area. You've got elements from all around the region coming in and concentrating in this wonderful product, honey, which is enzymatically alive as long as you don't heat treat it. So this working with the bees is, is one of the great health benefits to get symbiosis within the environment and a completely sterile product that stores indefinitely. It's blending firewood and producing wood fuel. It's going to be one of the largest parts of the work in the cold climates. It can be 20% of your energy, 20% of your economy. In a lot of places, you're going to use many, many cubic meters, cords of wood. You can go through them six. You can go through six cords of wood. That's four foot by four foot by eight foot, or that's quite a few cubic meters of split logs. We need to look at exactly what you can do to extend that energy storage through heat gain inside a structure. Stick fuel burns hotter. We know we can use a lot less wood. Down to one fifth the amount of wood if you come down to an efficient wood stove, an efficient thermal mass heater, and a stick fuel fire. Because sticks burn at 800 degrees centigrade, up to 1000 degrees centigrade with the right timber. So you need to look at smaller fires, more intense heat, and a storage in thermal mass. Otherwise, you're going to be splitting logs forever and you've got to grow a lot of trees. But when you run on stick fuel, you can run on a copper system. And that doesn't actually kill trees, that extends the life of trees. Coppice trees live longer. Some of the oldest trees on earth are coppice trees. Ah, this is not a toilet seat. It's a maple syrup tap. This is the cover for the bucket. And here's our tap hole here. We insert our tap, nice and firm. Here's our bucket. It's got a hole conveniently positioned, hangs off the tree. The maple syrup here flows in the springtime with the flush of spring growth and fills our bucket up with a perennial source of maple syrup which we can boil down and boil the water off to make a syrup, or we can put out in shallow pans and freeze the water off from the surface, extracting the right, uh, ice off the, the top and hardly use any energy at all. This is a great source of cold climate sweetener. And we can tap a tree multiple times. There's previous taps here and quite a few taps on this old sugar maple here. A great source of sweetener in the cold climates, tree sap. The old growth forest, the root net, holds this pure water. This water can be tapped in certain places. It comes out at a constant temperature. Here it's 46 degrees Fahrenheit and running absolutely pure. We can build these systems. We can hold this water. We can get this water to flow. With the right earthworks, the right plannings, we can rebuild these pure hydrologies of the earth.
You can see here the spring line rising up out of the sand. This is almost ice cold water coming straight out. Absolutely pure, absolutely clean. Tastes beautiful. We can recreate this right across America and right across the world. We can make all the rivers run clean and constant like this. And that's the heritage we deserve. We can rebuild these great forests, which will also rehydrate our spring lines. We can start with earthworks and end up with giant forests. At the end of summer, these are the final fungal flushes before the autumn and the cold of the winter. When it all goes dormant and sterile for a fresh start every single spring. This is such a dependable system. These are the great forests of the cold climates. Where the soils are fertile, they're continuously replenished, and the fungi become one of the great harvests and storage for the winter. This is the hyphae net. This is the internet of the soil, the connecting species between plants and trees, and also the breakdown system for the lignum fiber in the wood. A forest grows on a fallen forest, and the fungi are the teeth that break it down. This is where we get full security. This is the system that anchors our landscape, our fertility and our productivity. This is what we need to be part of our system shredded through all of our landscape. And this is what we will work towards, we'll have to.